the God, in the name of Jesus Christ, as we come before you, Lord, I pray that may you touch every one of us, O oh God, and help us, Lord Jesus Christ, even just to move from one glory to another glory. Father, Lord Jesus Christ, as we approach thy throne of mercy, I pray the Lord may the sweet Holy Spirit just move in our midst, Lord, and touch every one of us, Father. Amen. Lord Jesus, may you reveal yourself even to each one of us individually, Father. For Lord Jesus, you've always done this, Father. Lord, this is an individual walk with you, Father. Help us, Lord Jesus. Father, Lord God, I commit, Lord, these dear ones uh, that are learning to use these instruments, oh, Father. Even Ruth and Esther, may you help them, Father. May you help, Lord David, Father, also boys, Lord, and any brother or sister that touch these instruments of Father. May they know, Lord, that they're doing it for your glory. Not for any man, but for you, O oh God, in praise of your holy name. We thank you, Father. Lord, I also commit, Sister Peter, in your hands, Lord, that Father, Lord Jesus Christ, I know you are able, and you'll grant it, Father God, to dissolve every clot, every blood clot in her, Lord Jesus. May you, Lord, just come and flush everything, Father, out in the name of Jesus. Father, do this, Lord, for your glory, O oh Father. Lord God, let it be a testimony that the doctor can give a testimony of your goodness. Father God, may the great Holy Spirit just touch your Father and make a whole, O oh God. And Lord Jesus Christ, we just want to thank you once again, Father. For what you've done, Lord, for our dear brother Patrick, Father God, by bringing, Lord, a little boy in the family. And he's not just in the family, but also in this church family, Father. Lord, we thank you, Father, for the miracle you performed, O oh God. You bless our sister and the little one, Lord Nathaniel. May your Father just touch them, God. Father, every brother, every sister that are here, Lord God, I pray for them. You bless Sir Jackie, Father. You bless, Lord, even them that are visiting here right now, Father. That I don't even know their names. May you bless us all, Father. Keep us, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. May God bless you. Uh, you may be seated just uh, uh, for a few minutes before we read God's word. I uh, just want to greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. May God richly bless you and uh, keep you nice seeing every one of you in the house of God. And I uh, just want to say a few things before we go into the word of God. And uh, before I do so, Sister Jackie, may God bless you. Amen. Is this your sister or? Okay, nice seeing you. Highly welcome in the house of God. Uh, sister Jackie is from uh, Jamaica, is that right? And from Brother Keith's church in, uh, is it in Kingston? How do you call it? Kingston. Kingston. Kingston, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, in Jamaica. So I like the way they talk. They talk nice and sing very good. And uh, I hope you'll sing some of uh, those uh, Jamaican songs one of these days for us and uh, 
you know, I wish everyone was talking like a Jamaican, like the accent and all that. <laughs> and may God bless you. You are all welcome in the house of God. And uh, also, uh, we have these little uh, machines, and I just wanted to make sure that uh, everything is uh, working right. And uh, uh, where are the translators? Are they at the back there? Okay, I can see that. And, uh, yeah, may God bless you. And uh, before I say something on that, I just want to uh, appreciate all of you for what you did. And uh, uh, if you didn't do it, I know you'll do it next time to contribute when we have something to do. And uh, I've come to believe that uh, we can do anything. Amen. There is nothing that can stop us. Amen. Amen. We can do anything. I believe that we can do anything. Uh, so... Uh, uh, just so uh, proud of you and uh, you know for everything you are doing in this uh, little congregation and may God richly bless you. Amen. And uh, just uh, if you look at those little gadgets that have the volume, uh, you can just uh, uh, turn it a little up if you want to hear more sound. You can turn it down if you want. And also, uh, Mr. Graciela, and uh, if there is Brett Cornell, they're using it. You can also control what you have. We have uh, the volume, and also we have uh, uh, also other receivers. You can listen to the sound, and uh, you know, so you can know what is coming out. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll show you how to do that, but uh, uh, it is very easy to uh, use them, and uh, I would like to believe that you can. Uh, here, clear. Can you hear me clear? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. My God, richly bless you. And what I want us to do, we'll have some markers. Uh, once you finish using that, just write on your name so that you know that is you as you'll be using that. So uh, uh, the deacon, just make sure that's up at the wrappers. Just give them to them, uh, especially the earphones. Just uh, write on their names. And then they can just put it inside so we know when you come in, you'll be using that. That would be yours. Amen? Amen. Is that good? Amen. Okay, that's wonderful. Uh, also, just as the way I had prayed, um, we thank God. Uh, uh, yesterday, Brother Patrick called me. They were in the hospital. And uh, just from uh, uh, the funeral, they went right straight there. And, uh, uh, you know, just thinking of our sister, God gave us strength and we thank God for that. You know, uh, just in the evening, we had a little baby boy here by the name of Nathaniel, and uh, 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 we thank God for that. I think that if you want to know, the other name is um, Prayer Hub, so uh, the father of prayer. So <laughs> we need more prayer warriors in this church, so we thank God for that. And, uh, uh, we are waiting for Black Cornell's wife too, and we are praying for them. Uh, just go to perform a miracle too. So uh, we thank God for all that, and uh, God is a good God. And also, uh, before I go further than that, I uh, just wanted to announce to you also uh, that how many of you know uh, Brother Jose and uh, Sister Mali? How many of you know them? Just raise your hand if you know them. Okay. Would you want to know them? Amen. Yeah? Amen. <laughs> okay. Uh, brothers and sisters, you could just stand coming from here and uh, uh, the little ones. Just start doing it for God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. This is a, a beautiful family. Amen. Yes, so when you see them, you know it's a family. Amen. Amen. May God richly bless you, my brothers and the family. Uh, for now, they are members of this congregation, and uh, they don't live <coughs> from here. So they are officially members of our congregation. And uh, whatever you do, whatever you do, Always just support them, the members of this congregation. They just came, and you understand when you're just coming into this country uh, how life is. You understand that? Isn't it? I don't have to go further than that. So, if you are eating two loaves of bread, make sure you spare one for 
<laughs> yeah, so we, we thank God and uh, may God richly bless you and we love you and uh, you are welcome uh, in this congregation in the name of Jesus Christ and we shall just pray for them Amen. let's pray Father in the name of Jesus Christ we thank you Father for this uh, wonderful occasion Lord we know it is you that normally adds to the church of Father Amen. Lord, when you do the adding, Father God, it is always blessings. May you bless Brother Hosea and his wonderful family. May you keep them, Father. May you open every door for them, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, we know we are living in a nation that has already crossed God's mercy line. But Father God, I pray that may you keep them. May you provide for them, Father. May you open every door that seems to have closed. May you open every door for them, Father. May you bless them, Lord Jesus Christ, and may they be a blessing also to us, Father. Lord Jesus, bless the little, uh, uh, the children that you've given them, Father. May you be with them, Bella and the Emily, Father, and keep them, Lord Jesus Christ. It's a wonderful thing to have them as members of this congregation. We pray this, Lord, and we know your hand of blessing is resting in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I do pray. Amen. May God bless you so much. God bless you. 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 Welcome. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. You can appreciate that. Amen. Praise God. And uh, just before I, uh, I really just wanted to also uh, congratulate every member of this congregation for uh, the work you've done. And uh, uh, it is something that uh, nobody can really explain. And uh, uh, I'm even running short of words to explain this. The love I just show, I just saw from this congregation, and uh, the support, especially when uh, uh, this uh, lady Damaris, uh, to the majority of you, we, you know, we buried her yesterday, and uh, uh, you know, it's just people have no words to explain. Uh, what they saw, and uh, you know, the a uh, lot of people came to me, you know, saying, "Oh, you have a wonderful building here. When did you?" Uh, and all that, and I would say, "No, this is not my church." And it's just, uh, you know, people did not just understand how then you doing this, and uh, and I don't understand it either. So. But I know God is good, and, uh, and uh, it is Him who plans everything from the beginning. Because if you, if, you tr if you try to understand everything that God is doing, you reach somewhere, you'll find out you don't understand exactly everything God is doing. You know, I was just sharing with Brother Sunga yesterday, and uh, uh, we were talking about this man uh, on the cross. Uh, you remember the thief on the cross? They had we had two, amen. And uh, one thief accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, another one did not. And uh, you know, God bless you, my dear ones. Nice seeing you. Uh, God bless you so much, amen, amen. God bless you. Uh, so yeah, God bless you, Dad. How are you? God bless you. <laughs> yeah, forgive me if I don't see you sometimes as uh, I keep looking at you, I begin to see where. <laughs> May God bless you. You are all welcome in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I want you to feel comfortable and you're all welcome and we can recognize uh, your presence. So, uh, uh, what was I saying? Okay, so what I was saying was this, and we were just sharing. Now, on the cross of Calvary, uh, uh, first, if you read one account about the thief on the cross, you can cross-check that. Uh, the two thieves, they were uh, telling Jesus stuff, you know, and, uh, and uh, you know, calling him names and all that, and it looked there was no respect at all. But if you look in uh, another account of one of the writers, and you can ch check that. 
uh, this man, something happened to one of them. Amen? Something happened. And it is something you can't... It is all right there. It's all right. It's okay. You can just take it. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, it was something that you couldn't really... Nobody could explain exactly what happened. I'm just trying to say, you can't explain everything. We believe God. Amen. Amen. We just believe God. Amen. And this man, he began to speak different. And he even talked to his friend on the other side and said, you know what? This man has done nothing amiss. He has done nothing wrong. But you and me deserve to be here. He doesn't deserve to be here. And you can imagine agony and pain he looked at Jesus and he said, Remember me when thou comest in the day. You see that? Amen. So now you begin to think about this. I want you to understand this. There is no record or any recorded um, history that this man was a worshiper of God. There is no record. The record we have, he was a very bad man. So then now, how did he know? Because he recognized Jesus was a king. Amen. 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 So which means if he's a king, then he has a kingdom. See that? So he says, remember me when thou comest into the kingdom. And Jesus said, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Today. See? Now, and also, if you, try, if you want to try to find out how is it going to happen today, you may not have an answer. But you know what? Just before that man died, Jesus died before he died. If you look at everything of God, there is an order. It would have been a terrible mistake if that man, the thief, one of them who accepted Jesus, would have died before Jesus did. Because the scripture says, there is without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And you couldn't say, but you see, get him down and take him to the river Jordan to be baptized. There was no time for that. <laughs> you see, I believe if they got him down, they would have taken him to the river and baptized him. But you see, and again, I know that's a good scripture. The Salvation Army normally use that. And, uh, you know, Salvation Army in some of the countries where we come from is a church. They wear like they have a uniform white and some colors and hats like armies, you know, army people and all that. It's not like a way, you know, people of salvation, armies where you buy stuff and all that. They like that scripture. They say that's why we don't baptize because the thief on the cross was not baptized. You see how weak that reasoning is? You can't lean on that. <laughs> so anyway, Jesus just went ahead of the man. And when that man died, can you imagine he went right into paradise? And he came, he came up just in a couple of days. Hours, he was up again as a child of God. So there are certain things you can't figure out. How did he know this? God reveals himself to his people. Knowing God is by revelation. It's not by really, it's good to study, the, to study the Bible. But unless God who wrote this Bible comes and open your eyes to see what he's saying here, you'll have a very big argument. Haven't you met somebody and uh, you know he's a drunkard and he tells you, but Jesus met Leek in the wedding at Ghana? In, at, at, not Ghana, at Kenya. <laughs> you see, so, uh, you know, they will go into endless talks and all that and say, you see, you know, even, you know, I met a man who was telling me, can you read me that scripture where Paul was telling Timothy not just to be drinking water, but to drink some liquor? 
You see, it, God, unless God reveals himself to you, you're not going to see the word. It's just like the way your sisters are dressing right now. You know, it may be very hard to explain to somebody else out there why you're dressing the way you're dressing. Because it may not make sense to them. And you see how people say, you know, if you are Hindu that I'm not against you, I don't know you, most of you anyway. So, uh, but the ones I know, I know you doing right things. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is that uh, you hear all kind of reasonings. All kind of reasonings you're going to hear them. And if you are not deal to deal, or if you have never heard some of those things, some of them can make you think what to say. You know, and sometimes you may seem, or it may look like you are losing an argument. And the other person seems like he's winning. But I want you to understand this, that the fact that you win an argument does not mean that you are right. You see that? So you read all kinds. It's just like the way, you know, this man, this man, he marries another man, a man marrying another man, and he says that's the only person he loved. See that? And he's trying to convince you that it's just all right. God made them that way. They're not going to accept anything else because that's what they think. And um, you see, they say, God made me this way. As I told you sometime, you know, it looks like, um, you know, uh, in this country and also some of the countries where we come from, it looks like, uh, you know, there is nobody who is guilty of anything. Everybody's just a victim. Of circumstances. I was born this way. You see that? But well, if you are born that way, Jesus says you'll be born again. Amen. And also, the fact is, to those of you who have gone to school, if you've studied a little bit behavioral psychology, they will tell you that uh, behavior is learned. You're not born. If I take a little girl here who is um, a white little girl Spanish or, you know, because, you know, they will look and take them to Africa. Of course, people know this is somebody, you know, looks different, the skin color and all that. But you leave him or her there. That little girl or that little boy will speak and just act and do things just like the people over there. Amen. You see that? Amen. So we learn these things. It's not that you're born that way because if uh, God cannot hold you or me responsible if he made you that way. And also God has given us a very important thing, the power of choice. Yes. In the many times we suffer because of the choices we make in life. And you see, it's very strange that when we suffer, we begin to say, see what God is doing? <laughs> but you see, it's because of the choices you made. Because everything you do, whether it's a right choice or not a right choice, it has consequences. You see that? So let's not just bring on, it's just like when someone dies, people say, now see, God killed him. God did not bring death. You go to Genesis, you'll find out in God's mind and desire was everybody to live eternally. But man failed God by listening to the voice of the devil. And because when God says something, it has to be so, it happened just exactly what God said. That's how death entered the human race. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, 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 to those of you who are just new here, uh, there, is, uh, there was um, a member of a stand church, but we knew this person, and we ministered to this person up to the very last day this uh, lady passed. Just a young woman around 47, 48, and uh, 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 I just want to say thank you to the entire congregation. May God just bless you and keep you. Amen. And I would encourage every one of you, whenever there is something like that, you know, at least look for something to be part of it. 
do something. Amen? Do something. You may not even have money, but you can do something. Is that right? So don't say I have no money. You know, if you are just there to talk to somebody, just with a kind heart, and encourage them, you've done something. Even just your presence right there, you've done something. Your prayers and all that. See that? So it was, um, it was a challenge to everybody. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, people uh, embraced. And, uh, you know, we don't know everything God is doing here. But as days go by, we're going to see why things are happening or happened the way they did. So I just wanted to say thank you uh, for what you did, Brother Patrick. Thank you so much also for, you know, every day you are doing, coordinating everything. We really appreciated that. And uh, we raised, um, it was about 25000 right there? Yeah, to 25000 Could you imagine to 25, it covered everything? No one had to put a dime in it. To God be the glory. Yeah. You can do anything if you want to do it. I believe that. You can. We can. Don't say you cannot. Always say you can. And act that way. Look that way. Walk that way. Amen. God is a good God. So I just want to say thank you uh, for doing all that. And uh, may God richly bless you. And uh, a whole lot of these things we'll understand them by and by. And also another thing before I read the scripture I would like to say is that always remember, never give up on anybody. Never give up. Even if you go, you talk to somebody, you know, maybe you go say, maybe if I change the way I talked, it will be different. And go tell them, you know, sister, I love you. Brother, I love you. But I'm convinced this is the truth. And here, you know, can you just think about this again? Think about this again. Can we talk about this a little bit? You know, show them you love them. As one of the sisters said here, you can resist any denomination. You can resist any country. You can resist, but you can't resist love. That is something you and animals <laughs> can resist love. There are a lot of things you can resist, but when love is extended to you, it's very hard to resist love. It's very hard. And that's how Jesus conquered every demon at the cross of Calvary. It was love that held him there. There were not the Roman spikes that held him on the cross. Really, it was love. The love he had for you and me. Not because we were loving him, but he loved you so much. And then one singer said, when he was on the cross, he was thinking about you. He could have thought about his pain and what he was going through, but on the cross of Calvary, he had you in his mind. And he was there until every bit, everything you've done, he took care of that. From the beginning up to the end. And he said, it is finished. The same question has been dealt with. It's just to walk to Calvary and say, Lord, it is me. Have mercy on me. Forgive me, Father. And he will forgive you. So may God bless you. We shall stand up and read the scripture here. Uh, when, whenever you get time, just read the book of uh, Luke chapter 2, and then uh, also you can read Matthew chapter 2. Uh, just read all that up to the end. Uh, I just want to pick a few scriptures here, and then uh, uh, have you sit down as we look into this. Uh, I'll read from the book of Luke chapter 2. Uh, from verse 1, I'll tell you where to end. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, 
saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, For thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. You may be said that as I read a little bit. I'm sorry. I told you, look, it was Matthew chapter 2. Is it? Was it right over there? Okay. <laughs> You know, when you stand here, there's a lot of things that go through your mind, so you forgive me for that. Eh? Yeah, there's a whole lot of things. If you take me to see a doctor, the doctor will say, This man is very sick, but I'm not sick. <laughs> because my blood pressure is so high right now, and everything is just so high. So, uh, uh, God is a good God. Yeah, that was uh, actually, yeah. but whenever you get time, read, it's just the same account, but read. Uh, there will be some slight differences here and there. Uh, you can read the book of Luke also. So just combine the two, Luke and Matthew chapter 2, uh, both chapter 2, chapter 2. So uh, I'll read also just, I'll just a little bit further. Uh, of course, Matthew 2, just a little bit further. That is verse 7. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. Then Herod, uh, I'm sorry, verse 8, and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. Now I want you to see by this time, Jesus was just a young child, about two years old. The wise men did not find Jesus in a manger. But uh, the, the, the shepherds who received the word at that time, they went and found the child in the manger. So I want you to note that. When the wise men came, they did not find Jesus in a manger, but Jesus was in the house. He was about two years. Uh, that's some of the things you... So when you just get... Uh, and I like this. Let me just read a little bit. And when they saw this star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Verse 11. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And remember, these were grown, rich men with the very expensive uh, gifts they had brought. I was just thinking when we go to Jesus, which attitude? How are we coming before the Lord Jesus Christ? There is this tradition. Uh, when you go to see a king, even though he's a rich king and all that, you don't go empty-handed. At least you take even just a little carving. It could be an elephant. It could be a giraffe. Something. At least you go with something. Amen? Amen. Uh, we were taught in uh, is among our culture that if you visit somebody, you don't go empty-handed. At least go with some water, something like that. It's a good culture in a way. You know, so uh, the scripture says, And when they were come into the house, 
They yes. saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened the treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. They did not just come to see this king empty-handed. They had something in their hands they had brought to this king. Amen? Amen. I'll just read a little bit also in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 19. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 19. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Now I'm speaking the way I'm speaking because we have, uh, in the, uh, translation is going on, so they have also to catch what I'm saying. So <laughs> just bear with us on that. She was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. Verse 19. Now, and what I want you to do here, as we read scriptures, I want you to think about what we are reading. Because many times, scriptures are read, and because of lack of understanding, we get the wrong picture of what the scriptures are talking about. Now, I just want you to pay attention to this scripture. It's also right on the screen there. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. It's explained to us how the birth of Jesus was. When, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together. You understand what that means? Before Joseph knew Mary as a wife. Because Mary was a virgin. Meaning, Mary had not defiled herself with any man. You understand that? She was a virgin. And the scriptures were getting fulfilled. You see that? Because it was to be a virgin. I wish all our girls understood this and our young boys here too. Even as grown-ups. To understand all this. Amen. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Now think about that. Just read that. Think about it a little bit. Now, before Mary and Joseph came together as a husband and wife, because Mary was still a virgin, but the scripture says Mary was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. So if I may ask, who was the father of Jesus? Do we have any problem there? No. Okay, the Holy Ghost was the father of Jesus. That's what you told me, isn't it? Oh, oh, one of my brothers is written there. So now, what is the relationship between the Holy Ghost and the Father. I see you are good students of the Bible. They are the same, isn't it? Because God is a spirit. And not an evil spirit, but a good Holy Spirit. Amen? Because if Jesus, if the Holy Ghost is separate from the Father, then we have a problem. And the problem we we'll have is this. Do we have a child that has two fathers at the same time? No. 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 Or maybe you didn't put the question right. It's impossible. It can't happen. It isn't because the question will be, but who is the father of this child? And they will say, okay, let's do a DNA test. There is no DNA that ever came since they discovered this thing that said, oh, this child has two fathers. No, it's only one. 
You see Amen. that? Amen. So that right there, it breaks the doctrine of three gods in one. Right there. We don't have to go any further. Right there, it breaks the teaching. Oh, there are three gods in one. Oh, I believe in the Trinity. You know where it came from? In the Sian Council at 325. And if you are little smart enough to find out the word of God, you will search. The way the Magi search. We have to go. Isn't it? So now, so this is a little strange. And, uh, you can imagine what is going through the mind of Joseph. It's like, but, no, no. What did you do? <laughs> and you can imagine how Mary has to explain, you know what? You remember that day we were in the synagogue and the preacher began to preach? You know, actually a voice spoke to me and told me, I was that virgin that the prophet Isaiah talked about who was supposed to bring forth that child. And when we left the synagogue, that is something just happened. When I was walking somewhere, I met a man and he told me he was from the presence of the Almighty God. His name was Gabriel. He told me he was an angel. And you can imagine when he said, I met a man, Joseph said, now this is too much. You met a man? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a little bit. He told me he was an angel from the presence of God. And you can imagine, you know, if you put yourself in those shoes, you know, sometimes when you read the scriptures, you say, oh yeah, and Joseph, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, if you put yourself, if you think about that, it was not an easy thing for Joseph. See that? So the scripture says in verse 20, But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. You see that? God knows how to calm you when you are going through situations like that. So at that moment, his mind began to change because God had just sent an angel to speak to him. And the angel said this, and she, but no, verse 21, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Amen. Now, this is powerful. That's right. This is powerful. Amen. Now, but you see, I was just thinking in the back room, I was just thinking. Maybe if you, if you have to understand there's some nation that still hang people. They take you and you see the news come down. And they put a little something on your face. And they stick your head in there. Can you imagine those people that are like this? You've cried the whole night. You just don't know what to do. And you realize there is nobody who can save you because that's the government that wants to kill you. So which means there is no one else. So at that moment, before they, they say now, nah, okay, snap, they're wrong. Then something happens that seems to be greater than the government and say no. He's not going to be to, to be killed. Could you imagine you say, is, it, is that for real? Before you begin to jump up and thank God, you believe you never worshipped him? You see what I'm saying? So when we talk about saving his people from sin, this is a big deal. But again, it may give some people a little difficulty in understanding. 
understanding this. I don't know if you have ever talked to Muslims. I'm not against Muslims. They're fine people. It's only that they read the Quran and uh, they try to follow the Quran, you know, which I believe is not the word of God anyway. It's the word of Allah, but it's not the word of God. So, and I met one and I told him, you know what? Uh, Jesus Christ. And he asked me a question. And of course, uh, from his perspective, it's a valid question. He asked me, but what do you mean? To get saved. Saved from what? I'm fine. I'm good. There is nobody who is looking after my life. So when you say get saved, saved from what? So then you realize that it's not just easy the way you think. Because you see talking to people, oh, get saved, you know. And they say, I don't want to get saved. But the man is asking you, saved from what? What do you mean get saved? And then you were telling me, he said, but that man died, they say. But anyway, the Quran says Jesus never, was never crucified. But they would take your argument, you say he was crucified. So they said, what has that man that died when you said 2,000 years ago, if he ever died, to do with me? Then again, you realize it takes the grace of God for you to come to that level and try to break it down for him to understand. What are you trying to say? You see that? So, and also every sinner, someone who lives in the world, will have a problem to understand when you say that he shall save his people from sin. Because we are living in the time when sin is like the things we wouldn't do. Or the things that were considered abominable in the time we are living in, you know, everybody we say this can't let me do my thing. As long as I'm not, I'm not hurting the other person, let me do my thing. But we've got to stop that person from doing his thing. I told you some time back, you know, suppose you are in a boat. And then there is somebody, a sister or a brother with a drilling machine, and he said, let me do my thing. I just want to drill from my side. You, you are sitting over there, I'm just draining my side. Now, if you let him drill, the water will, become, will start coming in, and all of us in that boat are going to die. See that? So we've got to be concerned. So she shall bring forth the Son, and thou shall call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. You see that? Now, we normally say, you know, killing somebody's sin, doing this is sin, doing this is sin, breaking a bank is sin, and some good people, we call them good citizens, will come up and say, I've never killed anybody. I've never broken any bank. <laughs> you see that? So you've got to think about, okay, what is sin? Sin is unbelief in God's word. It's not just one thing you do, but it's just unbelief. Because if you can't follow the whole, then you are a sinner before God. It's following what he says. Because Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word. No, he did not say, but by many words. But by every word that proceeded out of the, heart, the mouth of God. I know you say, but I've never read the Bible to know everything to follow it. That's why we just say, be born again. Let the Spirit of God come in you and live the life. You will come to find out all along, your life just must the Bible. Why? Because there is... The Holy Ghost that wrote the Bible that is living in you to live that life of the Bible. Amen. So we stress that, and Jesus stressed it was uh, his first message. He must be born again. He did not say you can choose if you want. No, it is a must. You must be born 
again. Amen. See that? Now, it is Christmas time, and uh, we normally don't do this quite often, but I just thought maybe we'll talk a few things about that. Uh, so that uh, maybe we could have some little clear understanding. I don't want to keep you that long, I have a few minutes there. Uh, just to have a little uh, understanding on uh, what is going on right now. <coughs> and uh, when you go home, read what I've told you, Luke chapter 2, and then also read Matthew chapter 2. And just read about how Jesus was born, read a little bit about that. Uh, that will at least help you and give you a little background. And uh, uh, you'll find out that when Jesus was born, uh, something that is remarkable, if you read those texts, you'll find out that they weren't, that you could count on your fingers the people who knew that the Savior has been born. There were not many. See that? But right now, everybody... You know, many people say, oh, Jesus was born. You know, we are celebrating his birth. You know, even though there are a lot of things that have added and Christ has been removed. Now is Christmas tree. So I'm not against a Christmas tree. You know, uh, Santa Claus. I'm not against Santa Claus. But the thing is, that's not Christmas. See that? But it is a moment that we should do. This is something we should do every day. You have Christmas every day. Why? Because God sent the Savior your way. It's not just something you wake up one day and then you, you know, remember when I told you sometime, you know, people say, you know, I brought you a Christmas gift and all that. Well, I'm not against you giving somebody a Christmas gift. But what I'm saying is this. The real Christmas gift you can give a person is the Lord Jesus Christ. I remember two years ago, I told you this sometime, that I went to, uh, somebody was fixing my car, and when I went there, there was, uh, you know, somebody that came in, and this person had something wrapped, and it was liquor in a bottle. He had just bought liquor for this mechanic, and uh, he came in and smiled, said, I brought you a Christmas gift. And that man opened, and he smiled, he was so happy, he kissed the bottle, and all that, and said, thank you so much for this, this is a good Christmas. I said, that's not Christmas. This man has brought death to you. Amen. So you see how we things get diluted and the devil comes in and brings so many things in? So, the real Christmas is God himself becoming our gift. Amen. And saving you and me from the world of sin, from the world of bondage. That's real Christmas. The Savior has been born. You see? In your life. And as he grows in your system, you are so saturated because he's growing in your system and pushing the things of the world out of your system. So you are not the person you used to be because you've got to look at these things. When you say you met Jesus Christ, when you say that you are a Christian, you know what you just said right there? You've told me you believe the Bible. And your life has to match the Bible. That's what you just said. <clears throat> So which means any part of the Bible I'm going to read, you are going to rejoice. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But it's unfortunate. We say we are born again. We say we are Christians. But you see, when the scriptures are being I don't like that part of the scripture. I was working somewhere many years ago, and this woman came in. I just to wonder, because, you know, to us, you know, coming from this country, we don't know so much, you know, the way people act sometimes, you know. So, you know, I used to wonder, but how come, you know, this woman wears boots, wears, uh, you know, just 
or looks but he's a woman, looks like a man, you know, try to fold little t-shirts here and walk around as if she's boss around here and all that so on and what you know, I did because I don't know those things. So well, one time she knew I was a Christian, so she passed and she would begin to say Kaswas and begin to say that Bible and all that, saying this. So I talked to her and said, Oh, you don't know I'm lesbian? Well, the Bible says it's an abomination. And I want you to check. When the scripture says it's an abomination, God never changes that to be something good in another age. What was an abomination in the days of Moses is still an abomination now. It never changes. You can say, oh, you see, you come from, I hear your accent. You are not born here, so that's why you're so ignorant. No, I'm not ignorant. I went to school here, too. <laughs> so, you know, you know, we are civilized. That's not civilization. If that is what civilization is all about, I don't need any part of it. And we don't even have to show you the scripture. We just look at nature. Nature is preaching the gospel. When you see the sun rise and come right over here, it is so strong. When it's, it's rising, you can look at it and say, look at the sun. I don't even feel the heat. But when the sun is right here overhead, you can feel the intensity of the heat. You can't even look at it. He's now a teenage young man. Shining so hard. See that? And then you see the sun go down. And you can look at it now. See? It's not like going weak. It's now like a, a person growing old. And now going to be buried. And darkness comes up. He's preaching the resurrection and the death and all that. You see that? The following day, it does the same and all that. Look at nature. Nature. Is still preaching the same thing. But look at man. How perverted man is right now. And then worst of all. Worst of all. We have churches now. Not just in this nation alone. But go to Britain. Go to Canada. Churches that are now marrying. You see a man standing here. And another man here. Now, this is not popular. You'll say, don't you know that you see the court just passed it? Well, do I really care what they say? I care what the great king and the great judge. This is the judge of all judges. What he said in his word. He's going to bring every other judge you on earth into his judgment court. Amen. Since when did you see a dog, a male dog chasing after another male dog? Brother Kenneth, is that Christmas message? Oh, yes. <laughs> Since when did you see a bull chasing after another bull? So there is something terribly wrong to see a woman looking at another woman funny. It is something terribly wrong to see a man, a man chasing another man. It's abomination unto the Lord, our God. And what was abomination? It was abomination still in the days of Jesus. It was abomination in the days of Paul. It was abomination in every other day up to now. It's abomination unto the Lord, our God. And that is not civilization. That is perversion. That is sin. But you see what we are doing? We are bringing Sodom and Gomorrah again here. This world is just about to get burned. 
because that is was the practice of the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. And you know what? I don't call them gay. I call them a sodomite. Yes, You see how we do it? If you look at the word gay, you know that word has been used it before. People would look at someone and say, wow, that man is wearing gay clothes. Meaning you look so good. You see that? Then they pick that word, they want to use it. To call a perverted behavior. No, he is a sodomite. That's the name, not gay. They are sodomites. And if God sank Sodom and Gomorrah, and let us go by, then God is obligated to rise up Sodom and Gomorrah and tell them I'm sorry. We've even gone worse. The judgment of God is hanging. But the, the good news is there is a way to escape. If you can only receive this wrapped gift, Amen. When Jesus was born, you know, in the manger, he was wrapped in swaddling clothes. Brabham described this. He said, "Is it that those clothes that uh, they used to put on the neck of uh, uh, these oxen to pull the plow and all that, so the, the the neck doesn't get bruised? Could you imagine? There was even no room for him. Just like right now, if you look at the way people live." There is no room for Jesus at all. Amen. Our schedules are so packed with things, and most of them, they're just useless things. Amen. Going to parties, you drink. You remember this young woman who went to the party drunk and dangled, walked in the freezer? An open freezer? She was so drunk. They just came and picked the body. Oh, somebody died in here. Is that life? Is that life? Is it, is, he's playing video games from morning to evening. Is that life? Is that life? Could you just think about that? There was another man who was a married man. And this man got hooked on video games. And the wives would wake up and wonder, where did my husband go? He's playing video games. It's a three at morning until he lost his job. The wife woke up one day and even he touched him. His mind is so sold out, he even didn't hear the wife touch him. Until the wife had to shake him so hard. So he's like, you, don't you know I'm playing I'm about to win the game? I'm playing with somebody in Australia. Could you imagine? Is that life? Why don't we give our life to Jesus? Amen. And say enough is enough to serving God. Is drinking life? Is being a prostitute life? Well, if you are here, you are single, and you are prostituting your life, you regret one day. You'll wish every bit of your life you never messed up yourself. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. And by the way, <laughs> if you ever will want to get married, you'll tell that man every bit of those stuff you did. And if not, you hide them, that man is still obligated to leave you. Oh, yes. Think about that. Live for Jesus. You never lose when you are living for Jesus. You never lose. Now, I want you to understand this. When God or the Holy Spirit reveals his word to you and makes his Word to live through you, the Holy Ghost becomes your father. Amen. What I'm saying is God becomes your father. Amen. Because
because he has revealed his word to you and your life is alive lived by the word of God. Hallelujah. If somebody doesn't know the way they look at your life, they know that man is a Christian. I want to be like that man. I want to be like that woman. That woman is a Christian. Praise God. The prophecy was getting fulfilled. That behold a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. That's another statement. Emmanuel simply means God with us. Amen. In the Old Testament, God in the office of the dispensation of the fatherhood. God above the people. But you see, God wanted to come down and walk with man and even live in man. So when he comes down, he's coming in the dispensation of sonship. He's coming in his son, Emmanuel. Not a second God. If you read the Bible, there is nothing like first God, second God, that God. You will never find a statement saying that Jesus Christ is the second God in the Holy Trinity. In fact, the term Trinity, as I told you, it was coined in 325. It wasn't there. None of the Bible writers had any knowledge of such a thing. But there was a confusion because people read the Bible and they could see it looks like Jesus Christ is God. And they read, they say, it looks like the Holy Ghost is also God. So instead of uh, trying to seek the face of God to find out, then God help us here, they just said, okay, I think there are three gods in one. Because they read, they also found the Bible says there is only one God. You see that? So now they say, okay, let's put the three into one. Which, if you think about it, doesn't even make sense. Well, the prophet was getting fulfilled. Isaiah 9 6. For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty god oh this scripture the Jehovah witness had to write another bible to change this because it really knocks many things down he's the mighty god he is the mighty god <laughs> the everlasting father well how is this so he only changed the mask that's the reason why we baptize people in water in the name of Jesus. Because that's the name of those officers, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. The name is Jesus Christ. There is no salvation in anyone else or in any other name. But Jesus is the name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I've attended many functions now here. The preachers pray, say, I'm asking this in the name of God. God does not hear that prayer. Amen. Or they say, I'm praying, uh, I'm praying in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. God does not honor such kind of stuff. Amen. Colossians 3.17. It says, in whatever you do, in word or in deed, do all in the name of Jesus Christ. Giving thanks to God the Father through him. Jesus is that name. If you are sitting here, you have never depended of your sins. Don't say, oh, I belong to another denomination. No, we are talking about God's word. And God has no other standard of judgment but his word. Oh, yes. The church we were in down here when you were burying this young woman. You see, the, when you walk in, now I'm not against the church. Just, I just want to illustrate a point here. When you walk in, you see First Baptist Church. Now, where we live, 
we have second Macedonia Baptist Church. So what's the difference? Maybe you go somewhere they say, you know, so, so it could be a fight. There's, we were first. You just came the other day. That's why you are second. Is that the difference? Now, and you realize they say you can't dance in church. If you begin to feel good and they sing a song and you begin to clap, you see everybody turning and they tell you. Oh, of course. To those of you who read this message, you understand, you know, Brabrandam was, uh, you know, he was a Baptist, isn't it? Before he, you know, God called him out. And, uh, you know, we had some young girls that came in and they had little instruments. They were playing and they were dancing around and praising God. And everybody was standing looking at him. That don't you see this? And you're lying it in the church. And he says, I went on the seat of the scornful and began to reprimand those girls. Then something told me, hold on. Let your mind run in the Bible. See, was there anything like this done in the Bible? And begin to see, oh, I see Miriam there beating a tambourine. And people are dancing and praising God. And begin to see David praising and worshiping Amen. God. And all that. And begin to say, Lord, I'm sorry. I've been wrong. And right there, he just joined them. And began to dance. And broke the Baptist theology. Amen. Maybe you didn't know that. <laughs> You know, me and Brother Clonel went to another church. I told you about it. I wanted to be baptized. That guy said, you can never dance in my church. You can't sing. And I said, where do you get that, Bishop? He said, that's what we believe. Now, the fact that you believe anything you want to believe, does it make it true? No. So I say, I say that's why you, we don't see instruments here. We can't do that. I say, so, but did you sing? He said, we sing. So I said, but if you sing and the song gets good, nobody even does like this a little bit. They say, no. They'll throw you out of the church. So how do you do it? You just sing like this. No emotions? Oh, yeah. I said, that I don't want that kind of religion. I want to see some emotions. In anything, there has to be some more. Some life, isn't it? Amen. Oh, yes. So we know you're alive. Amen. So all these things have messed up everything until people don't know God. So, but you see, we are going back to the Bible and to see exactly what God wants us to do. So he is the everlasting father. Why? Because the father was in that body. Amen. The creator of the universe took on a form. To call a tabernacle. He tabernacled in his son. The flesh was not God. But God himself who is spirit. Was right in there. Amen. Now you realize when you begin to. You want to uh, serve God. And or the word of God. You begin to follow God. Mm -hmm. Let me say now you make a decision. You want to start worshiping and serving God. You know it is at that time the devil who has been sleeping. Mm -hmm. Because he didn't care that before. Because he says oh, that was not a problem. Means I've, I've tied him properly. He can't move out. But once you begin to wake up spiritually speaking. And say now I want to serve God. The devil that has been taking a nap. That I've just been sleeping and all that. There are time when he rises and says, oh, no, no, no. We can't let him go. And they're going to put up a fight. Mm. I remember many years ago, I preached uh, another Muslim, young man. And this Muslim finally turned against him. And you see, in the Muslim religion, if you turn against Allah and Muhammad and the Quran, the first people who should kill you, according to the Quran, are your own people. 
And what they normally do, they normally poison. They've had to do that. They have to eat the food, and the food did not hurt them. And they put more poison and bring it more to them. And they eat, they don't die. So they say, what, what, what happened with this man? And those people have just been taught pray. God is working. My brother, God is working. So anyway, this man, he loved Jesus so much until he changed his name. So I asked him, so which name? He said, I want to have one of your name, then I'll get another name. So I said, so, so he got my name, Kenneth. Then he got another one, Nora. I said, Nora is good because Nora means sunlight. <laughs> so one day we were in church we were having a good time and praising God and uh, just for three days service was going on the mother was this women who are very strong and powerful they don't fear anybody came to the road like from here up to there it's coming to flush with a Muslim woman to flush of church well the vehicles rushed out they said lady you're not getting inside. She was very angry. They told him. You made to worship God? Say, no, 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 no. I worship Allah. Say, we will tie you under that tree and let you go in the side of the song. So when she heard that, she just walked away. So they are going to put up a fight. Your friends are going to stop you. Because, because they, they don't, don't want you to go. go. But it's all the enemy doing all that. You have to understand that. When your heart, when your life begins to uh, conform, you begin to hear the precepts of the word of God. So you realize now, at this moment, when that little uh, Jesus was now growing in the womb of Mary, something happens. And, and you can, can imagine how Joseph maybe had prepared, you know, a little place and everything was going on well and said, you know, honey, this is going to be the room, this is going to be the little place where the baby will be sleeping and all that. Then the government makes an announcement. You are going back to where you are born. We don't, we want to make sure nobody is going to escape paying tax. Because when people are scattered, it is easy to escape. But you have to go back and you had no choice to where you were born. It was tough for Mary. It was very hard. Her days were almost there to give birth. But then I had to move. Now every preparation, every arrangement, they have to go to a place they left many years ago. They have nothing there. But because he came from the lineage of David, they had to go back to Bethlehem. Now, if you look at the scriptures, you may think, why did this have to happen? You know, there are certain things that are going to happen in your life, and sometimes you may not like them. But this is what I can just advise you. In your life, just make sure you love God and you honor God. Make sure you love God and just honor God. That's number one. Then anything that happens in your life and you know you honor God, it is working for your good. Now, little did Joseph know and Mary that there was an exact specific place where Jesus was to be born. The scriptures were to be fulfilled. Not in Jerusalem, not in Ramon Gilead, not in any other place. But Jesus was to be born in Bethlehem of Judea. Hallelujah. And if you read Bethlehem, a little bit you'll find out that great men of God were born right at this specific place. Haven't you read this message? It was even the waters at this place. That's right. Was so nice. <laughs> you remember when David said, Oh, I wish I could get just water from that place. And there are three valiant men. They cut through the garrison of the Philistines until they went and they got it to the king. They brought it to him. 
He just poured it down as an offering to God. He said, if I drink this, like drink the blood of these people. And you see, Jesus is the water of life. Amen. 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 Bethlehem is the house of bread. Amen. Jesus is the Lord there. And also every son of God. Let me just read this before I forget. This is what the prophet of God says. He says this. He says this. Then, all true believing sons of God are born in Bethlehem with him. If Christ has to become the bread of life, to be born in Bethlehem, which is life's bread house, then every one of true believers in Christ is born in Christ. They're born in God's Bethlehem. Amen. Amen. You see that? You are born in Bethlehem. That's the place where God brings first bread. Hallelujah. Not outside, but right in Bethlehem. Amen. I want to be born now. I want to be in Bethlehem. Amen. Bethlehem is just in the word of God. Amen. It's not, not a geographical location, but it's just you are saying yes to Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember the Holy Ghost is our Christmas gift. Amen. 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 The scripture says in Acts chapter 2, you know, when Peter, after the Holy Ghost has come, he began to preach. And when he was preaching, that word was razor sharp. Was cutting right into the hearts of people. And they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said, repent every one of you. And be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Now, if you have ever been baptized in another name, your sins has never been remitted. That's Bible. Amen. That's Bible. You can check the whole Bible. If you can find a place right now, this evening, let, let me give you one week. If you are here, you've never been baptized, and you're still saying, oh, I don't want to follow that. This is a challenge for you. I'm giving you one week. If you find a place in the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, any scripture, let me not say a scripture, half of a scripture that says that they were baptized in the name of Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, or in any other baptism other than the name of Jesus Christ, there is a check for you of a thousand dollars next Sunday. Amen. Isn't that a good deal? Amen. If you find out, but if you don't find out, come, we'll baptize you. That's all I'm saying. Amen. I'm not playing lottery in church. I'm just throwing a challenge so you can go and search. Because it's no time to play games or just walk away and say, oh, I believe what I believe. Show me in the Bible. If it's not in the Bible, don't do it. But if it is in the Bible, do it. Because God will use this to judge every person. He's not going to use the teaching of our church or the teaching of First Baptist Church or Second Baptist Church or Third Baptist Church or Roman Baptist Church or any other denomination. God will use His word because His word is the standard. And God does not have two standards or three standards, it is only one standard. He has no back door. If you are like you, but you are not that good, but go through the back door. God has no back doors. And as I told you, on that day, you will never invoke the fifth commandment or the, 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 that, that law that I refuse to answer. Because your life is about. And because God is a God of justice, before he passes sentence, he has to bring you to his court. Yes. But right now, there is no lack of fire, people going there burning. Yes, it's a place of torment where they go. It's a place of torment. It's not a joke. But it's not the lack of fire yet. Because God cannot punish people until he brings them to judgment first. 
See that? So it's only one standard. As the Bible says, there is one baptism, one Lord. There is no sprinkling in the Bible. All those things are not there. So he says, repent, every one of you, and be baptized in what? In the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the Christmas gift. The gift of the Holy Ghost. He says, for the promises unto you, and to your children, and to those who are far, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That is our Christmas gift. That is your Christmas gift. There is no better thing than you receiving the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is God coming down and living in man again. And having fellowship with God. When you speak to God, God answers you. You know you are in his safe hands. When you are sick, he comes down and heals you. Even when the doctors have said there is nothing we can do. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I can just, just imagine now all the plans and everything. Give me like 10 minutes, I'll end. You know, it's like, okay. So Joseph looks at Mary and he says, okay, we have to go. There is nothing else we can do. I can imagine getting that little donkey and uh, giving some air and oats and all that. And say, so honey, let me pack some food, you know, some water and some biscuits and all that and some sandwiches. So we have a long way, but we have to go. And uh, I can just imagine, you know, uh, Joseph helping Mary get onto that little donkey. And uh, she's, uh, the Bible says she was heavy with child, meaning, you know, uh, just the days just around the corner for her to give birth. But they have to walk for some days to go to Bethlehem. It was tough. It was not easy. And uh, I can just imagine uh, Mary breathing the dust of the horses and carriages, you know, as people were moving because it was not just one family. There were many families moving. You know, some going to different places, other going, of course, to Bethlehem. And uh, I can see as they move, maybe they reach a certain little hill. And, uh, you know, it was getting dark. And uh, Bethlehem, of course, is in the valley. They could look and uh, as they look down, they can see, you know, the city is crowded. People are getting in and uh, yeah, they begin to wonder, will we get a little place really there? The way situations look like. And I can imagine Mary saying, you know, I don't feel, I feel some pain. You know, and Joseph says, okay, you know, let, uh, let you know, let's just rest a little bit. Then after that we can continue but we have to really hurry up and by this time you have to understand this because of the condition Mary was in they have to walk slowly to go to Bethlehem it is in that moments like those when something normally happens when you are a Christian when now it looks like it's only God who can help you God bless you I mean I sing you it's only God who can help you and, uh, you know, they are looking at that, it's getting dark. And uh, as it gets dark, they realize there is a star. And this star is shining very bright and very low. But I want you to understand this. What they are seeing, not everybody is seeing that. You see, like the way we read the scriptures, and we say, and we will meet the Lord in the air. And people say, wow, you know, we will be seeing maybe the, the, the CNA will come and take the pictures of people in the air and put in the air. Oh, I saw people in the air. as the bar. You will never see anything. But they will be happening. It's just in another dimension that you don't see. 
As my brother preached, you see, when the Philistines were looking for Elisha and they went to Dothan. And uh, Gehazi woke up and said, oh, master, we are all surrounded by the Philistine army. How are we going to get out of this place? And the prophet, the old man, Elisha, just told him. But he realized this man is trembling, he's shaking. So he's like, he said, I'll pray for you. Come here, young man, I'll pray for you. And he said, God, open his eyes, his inner eyes, to look into the supernatural. Amen. And right there, God did something. He saw chariots of fire, heavenly chariots of fire. And he was told there are more that are with us than those you have seen. Oh, that gives you comfort, isn't it? But you see, those are not the things anybody else is seeing. In the resurrection morning, that those who will be changed that day, that will see those saints when they come from the dust of the earth. Nobody else will see them. When we meet the Lord in the air, is a dimension. Amen. Nobody else will see what will be happening. Amen. But the saints will be meeting each other Amen. and say, I'm glad to see you, sister. Amen. I'm glad to see you, my brother. Amen. I'm glad to see you. Amen. So you made it. We made it. Praise be to God. Amen. As a young sister here, Eunice, uh, you know, God showed us something on the, you know, in our church here, the rapture taking place. And maybe one of these days we'll listen to her. Well, God is working Amen. and is preparing us. Amen. We're just getting ready to leave. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So that they mention matters. It is just like, for example, uh, as a uh, I was reading this scripture when the Bible says, and when the rich man died, he was buried. But when the poor man, Lazarus, died, he was packed by the angels. But you still see the bodies they lived in right there. And of course, they buried Lazarus too, the poor man. But there was something that was happening in spiritual dimension. The angels were escorting him to where he had to go because he was a child of God. But this man, the devil came and he went to hell because he was not serving God. So it could be we are taking the body to the same cemetery, but that's just the body. This is the dust. This is but the dust of the earth. You sisters, you brothers, you saw this lady. She was your friend. Now you look at that body and say, this is how the body is? This, this is what it's all about? Then you begin to think, there has to be something more than this. Amen. Amen. See that? Amen. So it's not that cemetery you're going. It's just the dust. This is what they're putting there. But you yourself, you are not there. Amen. 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 And people may say here, so and so is in heaven. There is no one that dies. And then people say, you know, I, I don't, I don't think he made it. You'll be killed. So everybody says, so and so went to heaven. So and so went to heaven. How do you know? How do you know? I don't just say those words lightly myself. If I'm not sure, I leave that. I will not say anything about that. Then <laughs> you don't say more than that. You <laughs> see, so it is in moments when things are like that that God shows up. So they begin to look at that, that light, and they knew this is a different light. It's not light, it's just, it's just a different stuff. It's like it has life. And it's like when they look at it, it's like it's up to something. And it's so low. Just hanging down the city of Bethlehem. You see that? And it's like that strange. You know, what we're seeing is something that is so strange. But I want you to know this. I'm saying that again. Nobody else was seeing that. 
Now, on the other hand, as we read, in the east, we had three men, the Magi's, that they had seen the star, the same star. But I want you to know this. These people, it took them about two years from where they were to where Jesus was. They put everything on a standstill. They said, we have to go and see this. Isn't this what Daniel talked about? Out of Jacob, there shall rise the king of star. I think that's the one. The people who study stars, they didn't see that one. All observatory towers couldn't catch that one. But that this man, they're seeing that star. And they're following it. You can imagine, you know, it is during daytime they would rest. But at night time is when they would move. So the star would begin to move. And they begin to move. They could see it very clearly. But it's just them that are seeing the star. Follow it. And, and I can imagine the conversation they had. I can just imagine, you know, when we reach there, how would things be? You know? And just having fellowship with one another and all that. Three is the number of witness. And that's why, of course, there are three and all that. So, you see, I want you to understand this, that uh, as a child of God, we are being guided by a star. Now, I'm not talking about astrology and all that. No, that's not what I'm talking about. We are being guided by a message. We are being guided by the word of God. We don't just follow anything. There is something that is guiding us. We are looking at there is a sign. These three men were believers. They wanted to understand. They wanted to find the truth. So they decided, okay, since we are going to see the king, we are going to pack gold, we are going to pack frankincense and marrow. And of course, this means something. Gold, let me begin with marrow. Marrow is, um, of course, a very costly, but bitter herbs, which represent death. They represent his great supreme sacrifice. Isaiah 53 5 says this, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. That is Mara. Frankincense means or speaks of service of his sweet loving life and go speaks of his deity in service to die. And of course, Bethlehem means the house of God's bread. See that? Jesus is the living bread, or the bread which is eternal, or eternal life, coming from God. In John chapter 6, verse 51, the scripture says this, and of course Jesus is speaking, he says, I am the living bread, which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Hallelujah. And the bread that I give is my flesh, yes. which I will give for the life of the world. Hallelujah. That's why there is need to come to Bethlehem, where we can feast with the king and partake of this bread. So they decided to pack these gifts. And of course, as they packed this, that what they were thinking he was. You see, your God is as big as you think he's big. If you have a weak God, that's how weak your God is. But my God is big God. He wants to do business with me. And when he does business, he does not say, you don't come to him saying we just need a bicycle. He <laughs> said, Lord, it's me. I want to do big business with you. <laughs> of course, the business of saving souls. And when you go into that business, God begins to take care of your stuff. You know, of course, as I said that, I was thinking of this man 
could, they couldn't understand. And, uh, you know, he was like, uh, wow. He, was, uh, he read a scripture from the Bible and began to think. He said, so a thousand years to God is just one day? Wow. How is that possible? And he was losing his mind when he began to think, so if a thousand years to God is just like one day, so what about a million dollars? What could it be? <laughs> maybe can do the conversation, but maybe begin to think maybe a dime could be. So he went to God, he said, God, give me a penny. And you see what God told him? Just wait for one day. Meaning, okay, you can wait for a thousand years. Anyway, that was just some humor. So. so, you know, when I say business, we have to think about, sometimes we think, oh, man, I need money to. <laughs> you, but you see, you never lose when you go into God's business. Amen. And the greatest business you can do for God is to win souls to God. And once you begin to do that, God will never leave you to go hungry. He will take care of the rest of your sin. There are things that have happened in our age, but only the believer see what is happening. You see, people talk about the cloud and all that, and there's a lot of controversy, but only the believer knows what it was. Yeah. See, the light, the light that came at sunset, a uh, mountain. Only the believer understands what that is. Amen. Praise God. I'm, I'm, I'm closing. I'm closing. This is the time, my brother, my sister. To seek the face of Jesus. Yes. Don't waste time <coughs> running after things that will never help you. Don't think that your life is so wrong here on earth. Don't think that way. I just want you to switch your mind a little bit. I'm crossing. And I want you to think about God. I want you to know your life is very short. And the time we can wake up tomorrow and your American is going to be with the Lord. And you're like, just wow. You know, most of you remember our young sister here that we buried two years ago, Sister Mary Sonia. Just walked here. We were together on Sunday. Then on Monday, the phone call comes, she's gone. I, I didn't believe that. Until they, you know, I talked to somebody else in the hospital. Only at age 19. You know, some of us, especially when we are still young, you may look at yourself and say you have many years to live. You have a lot of things to do. Let me tell you, the best thing you can do is to begin to look for this gift. Hallelujah. This is our Christmas. Amen. If you happen to live and you are right with God, blessed be the name of God. Because you know what? You know what? Immediately you close your eyes, you are in another body. Yes. Yes. You see that? Amen. And you look at yourself, you're like, I wish I came here when I was born, not even to live in the earth one day. You're like, this is what it is? Wow. I can't explain this. And you go right into a, a dimension where you wait for the day when the And you come in, you live there, and then the off that body marches to make a glorified body. Amen. Then we can eat at that time. Yes. You see that? But if you did not say yes to Jesus, you go to a place that is worse than right now. We say we are having a lot of problems. And let me tell you, this is nothing. This is nothing. Hell is not a joke. It's not a place you would want anybody to go. And once you know this, you are going to tell somebody about Jesus. You are going to tell them, sister, don't walk that way. This is the right way to walk. Don't do things like that. 
this is the right way. Amen. You're not going to keep quiet. Don't keep quiet, my sister, my brother. Tell somebody in love about the goodness of Jesus. Let them know that Jesus Christ is the gift that God gave to us to save us from our sins. Let them know that the Holy Ghost is God coming into man to live in man. And to make man that couldn't live like God begin to live a holy life. Like his father God himself who lives in him. Enabling him to live a Christian life. Oh yes. As I conclude they stormed the streets of Jerusalem. These men that have been traveling for about two years. Where is he? They thought everybody should know that Jesus has been born. They came to the king. The king said, what? Another king? No, no, no I'm the king. But they say he's been born. Say, what are you talking about? <laughs> anyway, he called the clergymen. Maybe you can say the pastors, the denominational pastors, the pops, everybody come here. He demanded of them of where Christ would be born. And these people, they came, they had the scrolls. They said, okay, we really do not know those stuff you're asking, but according to the scrolls, it's written you will be born in Bethlehem of Judea. But whether this has happened or not, we don't know. The word of God is a revelation. Amen. But with some people, like Simeon and Anna, God spoke to them. And they knew when the child was brought in to be circumcised, I can see maybe Simeon's eyes, water dropping down, and he just began to glorify God. Of course, we had so many children in there. How do you know? Unless God tells you. Amen. And when he held that child, he began just to glorify God. Amen. That was him. Amen. I said, now your servant can go. Amen. You have told me I'm not going to go until I see Amen. the salvation of Israel. Amen. Now I've seen, Lord, let, let your servant rest in peace. Amen. And then Anne, Anne, 84 years old, even blind, the Holy Ghost just healed him, came and did the same. You see that? Jesus was not born on December 25th. The Bible says the shepherds were in the field. To go to Palestine right now, it's freezing cold and there's a lot of snow. He was not born. Jesus was born in April, around March, April, around the springtime. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. Oh, yes. That's when life is coming up. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. So all these things is just a lot of things in this until the truth cannot be found anymore. But God promised at the end, He's going to bring His word back to His children. The Holy Ghost is God's gift. That is your Christmas gift. It's not, it's, it's not, you know, it's good to have, give your brother. But you see, you know, do that all the time. Don't just wait. It's just like Mother's Day. Don't wait, you know, once in a year. You've been cursing your mother and telling us stuff and wondering why he gave birth to you and wishing never to have another child to turn up like you. Then on Christmas Day or on Mother's Day, you go and buy something the same, I love you. But be nice to your mom, even if you don't buy anything. And just be nice, your mom will appreciate you and know that you love them. So let's have Mother's Day every day, isn't it? Father's Day every day, Christmas time every day. Yeah. A time when we are getting the Holy Ghost, wow. receiving the Holy Ghost, yeah. searching and saying, Lord, and staying on our knees and saying, Lord, I need you. Yeah. May the Lord bless you. Yeah. He who testifies to these things says, Amen. I come. Amen. Come quickly. Amen. Oh Lord Jesus, may the grace of the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ be with you now Amen. and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's pray. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We honor you, Father. I pray the Lord Jesus Christ, 
to any person that is here and is receptive to your word. Father Lord Jesus Christ, may you just give each one of us this gift of the Holy Ghost who is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ on the display in our life. Father Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for every soul, I pray for every sister, for every brother that is here, and Lord Jesus Christ, may you, O oh God, just have mercy on every one of us. And just bless us, O oh God. Lord Jesus Christ, our hearts are open to you. Lord, if there is anybody here and the heart is sealed, may every heart be open to you, Father, that you can come in and sup with us. Father, if there is anybody here that is sick, Lord Jesus, may you heal them, God. If there is anybody here, Lord, that is broken hearted, may you bind those hearts, Lord. If there is anybody here that is going through various troubles, oh God, I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, may you come down and sweeten the way, oh God. Lord Jesus Christ, every need in our midst, may you meet them, Father. May you keep us all, O oh God. And Father, Lord Jesus, these dear ones that are visiting with us, O oh God, I pray the Lord Jesus, may you help them, God. I know some things may have been said that offended them, or maybe hearing for the first time that way, God, I pray, Lord Jesus, may you help us, O oh God, and may you help them to know, O oh Father, it was not meant to offend, to offend anybody. And Lord Jesus, it's just a call to bring people, to wake up people, to know that this age has left their God. Help us, O oh Father. We thank you, we honor you, Lord. Bless us, Father. Keep us, Lord Jesus, that we may say yes to this gift that the Lord has promised. He's going to give to those who love him, which is the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, even in our lives. We thank you, we honor you, we praise you, Father. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. And just keep you come again uh, just to hear more about God. Uh, there is just so more, but uh, what I would say is that uh, uh, the things that I did not say may the Lord just uh, take them and amplify them that uh, you may have a clear understanding because it's really hard to go through all these things in a single service and to fulfill them soon. I pray that may the Holy Ghost uh, just take a, a line that could be on the loose ends and just amplify that message to you uh, that you can know and see that we all need the person of the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. It's not a denomination you need, but what you need is this gift, the Lord Jesus Christ. There was a gift God so loved the world that he gave us this gift to get you and me out of my wickedness. And after this, he said he's coming to take those who are worshiping him in spirit and in truth. And very soon, the rapture is going to take place. And the saints that have gone before us, they will come up fast. And we will see them. We will shake hands before the translation. Then we're going to join and go to meet the Lord Jesus Christ in the air. That's the beauty of God. He rewards you. And when we go home, there will be no death there. There will be no sorrow over there. Amen. Everything will be wonderful. There is no word to use in the dictionary to explain how it will be. But what a day. It will be when we see his face. Amen. And you do know the former things are passed away. 
and he hope he has made everything new. Pain is gone. Poverty is gone. Everything is passed away. That's the beauty of our God. So may the Lord bless you and give you. I love you, my love. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Just this few.